GoPuff is among the companies gearing up for a rough ride in the markets. The grocery delivery specialist waiting for signs of improvement before answering the big question when they might go public. I sat down with GoPuff co-CEO and co-founder Rafael Ilishayev at the Commerce Next conference last week. This is what he had to say about fundraising right now. We're looking at all aspects of the business, every area in the business, and saying, is this something that we need today? Is this supporting our profitable core? Because if you look at on a cohort basis, right, all of our markets that are launched before 2018 are producing 15% EBITDA margins, you know, fully baked. So you have your core that's very, very profitable. That's your cash cow. You have your newer markets that are becoming profitable. So as the cohort ages, that, that cohort becomes more and more profitable. So it's like, do you add additional lines of business that will produce profit, but many years out? Or do you focus on your core, kind of get back to free cash flow, and then you know, re-enter those growth opportunities, but cash losing opportunities maybe a year or a year and a half from now? And also speaking of the changing environment, I imagine it's also very different in terms of raising funds for the business when you need to do so. You know, we're finally, the, the private market seems sort of late to retrenching yeah. after the public market. So what does that look like? I mean, and I don't know what the public market, you know, uh, eventual evolution looks like for you and if what we're seeing right now changes that too. Yeah, I think, you know, unfortunately there's some people that are a little bit out of touch with reality, right? They have five, six, seven months of cash left and operating like it's okay. And, you know, I'll be able to raise money in two quarters, right? That just, I I don't see a practical world where that's going to happen. So I think every single CEO we need to look at their balance sheet and say, this is what I have. This is what I have to work with, not rely on any outside capital and then operate you know, the business accordingly. I think uh, fortunately for us, we built up a really healthy balance sheet. We have $2 billion of, dollar, $2 billion of cash uh, in the bank and it allows us to have a lot of flexibility and a lot of leverage. Uh, that being said, right, that's kind of been our story for the last nine years, right? We never needed investors. We positioned the business to always have a a maximum amount of flexibility. And as a byproduct of that, we're really prepared for what's to come. But I think founders are in general a little bit more paranoid in nature. And Yakir and I tend to overcorrect a little bit sometimes, but rather be overprepared and wrong than underprepared and, you know, disaster scenarios happening. Yeah. Um, and we're out of time, but that was also my coy way of asking if an IPO is in the future, which is, seems insane to ask while we're in a bear market, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Yeah, I think uh, GoPuff will be a public company one day. Uh, you know, the public markets are destroyed right now. Uh, I think that's the be- best way to put it, right? A lot of volatility. So we're going to, you know, we have the ultimate flexibility to wait. We have enough cash to wait for years. So when the markets start to rebound and start to look better, we'll, we'll obviously examine that, uh, that situation and you know, prepare ourselves for what next steps look like. So interesting to get a little insight into the mindset of an e-commerce company right now. You know, we were just talking about some of the other ones out there and how they're faring from the Amazons of the world on the one hand, Chewy on the another side of things, and then this so-called instant delivery, which is within a half hour window. That's what, where, they, where they sit. So they're definitely buckling up for some some tough times here. It started at a hookah delivery. I mean, th- these are some Drexel grads. So you know I got to give that a shout out. That's my alma mater. So go dragons out there, um, <laughs> unless you're coming from my uh, stu- student tuition. Uh, but anyway, I think at the end of the day, for what they're looking across in terms of this environment right now on the public market front, just doesn't seem like as in the environment, we're seeing even some of the DSPAC processes being canceled due to current market conditions. For companies who have been capitalized to this point in time, sure, some of their investors are going to be tapping on the door and asking, hey, so how much more capital do you need to make this happen through a market or an economic downturn uh, over this immediate period of time? And then even furthermore, when do you think we'll actually be able to realize some of that investment in terms of an equity market entry as well? Yes, bear market has definitely spread to, spread to private markets. Look at GoPuff, um, but look at Klarna. Klarna has been a complete mm. blow up the past two months. As you've seen this pullback in the markets, how are they going to raise capital? But I thought his comments on companies that he knows only sitting on five to seven months of yeah. cash. I, I don't know if that is an opportunistic thing for a GoPuff. Do they have 
do you use their cash to go buy up these companies? It's unclear, but that's that's alarming. That's an alarming it comment. It didn't feel that way right now. They've already been pretty acquisitive. They bought some liquor chains, for example, in various areas of the country in order to get access to those liquor licenses. And, and booze is one of their the biggest parts of their business. It's also traditionally a business that tends to be more recession resistant, that people buy alcohol no matter the economic conditions. That said, some of those comments also seem sort of pointed at, there was a recent report in the information from early May that talked about GoPuff's perhaps tenuous cash position or that they had high cash burn. So he seemed to be sort of addressing that. I should also mention GoPuff retrenched earlier this year, earlier than a lot of other tech competitors or e-commerce competitors did. They closed some of their mini, so they own the whole chain. It's not like an Valiant Instacart tonight. where you go to a store and, and shop, they have shoppers. Hmm. They own a little, what they call mini fulfillment centers. They closed some of those centers quite early in the year to try to prepare for what was Amazon's coming. been doing that too. They are now focused on curtailing their distribution mm -hmm. space as well. So it's not just GoPuff, Amazon yeah. too. All right.